Hello and welcome to Bay College's online lectures for college algebra. This is section 4.3 that deals with quadratic functions. The first thing we're going to look at is our library function of f of x equals x squared, our quadratic function. And we know that this looks like this. And all quadratic functions have a similar shape that we call a parabola. Now this par parabolic shape, as it's called, uh, from this, we can determine some certain aspects of the behavior of this function. The first thing is we can determine the vertex. That's the h and k value. Well, here, if we look at it, the h value is our horizontal transform, our horizontal shift left or right. And the k is our vertical shift up or down. And hence, the term vertex is where we're moving it vertically or horizontally. Now, if we look at this, we're not subtracting anything from x, and we're not adding anything to the function or subtracting, so we're not moving the function at all. Its vertex is the value 0, 0. Now, this is written in this form, and this is a, a quadratic form that we like to write these so that we can actually graph them and see all this information, like the vertex, the axis of symmetry. Uh, whether the function opens up or down. Here, our coefficient is 1, so it opens up. And we can determine if it has a minimum or maximum. If it opens up, we have a minimum, a lowest point in y. And if it has a maximum, well, it must open down, so it's highest point. So sometimes they're going to be written in quadratic form, ax squared plus bx plus c. But we're going to want to put it into this form. When it's in this form, all this information we need is evident from looking at this. The axis of symmetry, as an example, is where x equals h. Well, if we look at this one, we know it's symmetric with the y-axis being an even function. So its axis of symmetry is x equals 0, which was the h value of our vertex. We know that our coefficient here is 1, so it's positive. That tells me that it opens up because a is greater than 0. Now, if it opened down, a would be less than 0, and that's not the case here. Because it opens up, we know that this parabola has a minimum. All right, what, what can we determine from this where our function is written in this form right here? Well, we could tell a is 2, and it's positive. We know that the h value, it's always the opposite of what we see in here. What does x have to be to get us back to 0, like we had in the library function? And this is our k value. So first thing, let's determine the vertex when our quadratic is written in this form. Well, our h value is a positive one, the opposite of what I see in there. And the k value is also a positive one. The axis of symmetry is always x equals h. So in this case, it's x equal to 1. This function, because a is positive, we know it opens up. And because it opens up, we know that we're going to find a minimum value. All right, now let's graph this just with this information. When it's in this form, all we really need to know is its vertex and its axis of symmetry and the direction in which it opens. And we can sketch the graph of any quadratic. So I'm going to go 1, 1 for my vertex, over 1, up 1. And I know it's a parabola that opens up. And I could find other information, such as maybe this y-intercept. I notice there are no x-intercepts. So here it is. We've sketched the function. We know its behavior just simply because it was in the proper form. All right, let's look at another example. What if it's not? in the form that we just saw. What if it's in quadratic form, ax squared plus bx plus c? Now, we've seen many of quadratics at this point in algebra in this form. Our goal is to put it in this form. Well, one method to do that is to use completing the square. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to complete the square on this function so that my goal is to have it look just like that. Because here, I don't know what h and k is. The only information I can pull from this is, well, it does open up because a is positive. This a and that a are the exact same value. So let's go ahead and complete the square. To complete the square, we have to 
isolate our x values. So I'm just going to move this positive 3 over here. I'm not going to touch it. Now I'm going to say, well, what can I do with these x's? Well, to complete the square, this coefficient has to be 1. So I'm going to factor out this 2. 2 times x squared minus 2x. And then I'm going to leave a space here, because if you recall, when we completed the square in previous sections, we left that space. Now, now I'm ready to complete the square, because this coefficient is 1, because I factored out this 2. And if we recall, to complete the square, we take 1 half of b. So I'll write it right here. 1 half of b squared. Well, if I'm taking 1 half of negative 2, well, well, half of negative 2 is negative 1, and negative 1 squared is a positive 1. I'm adding 1 in order to make this a perfect square. Now, how much did I change the equation by? This is where we need to be careful. I added 1 inside of the equation here, but I'm multiplying everything in those parentheses by 2. So I actually changed the value of this by a positive 2, 2 times 1. So how do I undo that change? Well, what I do to one side, I do to the other. But I'm going to eventually want to get this back to f of x. So I'm going to take that value and subtract it from this side. So I changed it by a positive 2. I have to undo that change. So you, know, you could move everything to one side if it helps you keep track of things. Or you could just remember, if I'm changing it by this value, I have to undo that change. And now I'm just going to simply factor f of x equals 2 times this perfect square. I completed the square so I could factor it. x minus 1. 3 minus 2 is a positive 1. Now if we look at it, we can see it is in this form. We have an a value, an h value, and a k value. And now I can determine, what is the vertex? Well, the vertex is the opposite of what I see in here, 1. 1, and we can determine whether it opens up or down. And we can see, yep, this opens up. The axis of symmetry is x equal to 1, the h value. We could also find the intercepts. We could determine if this has a minimum or a maximum. Well, this coefficient is positive. It opens up. So that means it has a minimum value. And we could find that minimum value. Well, that minimum value is the y value at the vertex, the k value. And we could determine other things as well. We're actually going to return to this example before the end of this video. <clears throat> All right, so let's see how much information we can derive from a function that's written in the form a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k. And if we see this is in that form, so let's go ahead and pull the information we can from it. The first thing is, let's look at the vertex. The vertex, well, it's always the opposite for the h value here, so it's negative 4. And k is what it is, negative 3. So I have the vertex negative 3, negative 4. The axis of symmetry is always x equals the h value. Because this opens down, it must have a maximum. If it's a parabola, it has that parabolic shape. It opens down. The highest point would be the maximum. So what is that maximum value? Well, that's going to be k. So I can say y equals, or f of x equals negative 3. This is my maximum value. And if I'm asked where it occurs, well, I know it occurs at the vertex. I could say negative 4. All right, the x-intercept. Well, to find the x-intercept, I set this equation equal to 0. And if I do that, I add 3 to both sides, divide by negative 1, and then take the square root. Well, the square root of a negative 3 is imaginary, so that means there are no x-intercepts for this particular parabola. And if we think about it, it opens down from the point negative 4, negative 3, which is below the x-axis, and it opens down. So it's not going to have any x-intercepts. The y-intercept, well, if we set x equal to 0, I get 4 squared is 16. Negative 16 minus 3 is negative 19. So when x is 0, I get 
negative 19. Now let's go ahead and gra graph this, just sketch the graph. We know it's a parabola, and it has a vertex of negative 4, negative 3. So negative 4 brings me to the left, and negative 3 brings me right about here. And now I know it's a parabola that opens down. And it makes sense that my y-intercept being 0, negative 19, well, that's way off my graph. So I know I'm just going to have this area with the given graph that I have here. Now, can I determine what the uh, intervals of increasing and intervals of decreasing? Hopefully we recall this from chapter 3. And maybe we find the range and domain. Well, the increasing interval, because this is a parabola that opens down, as we move from left to right, the y value is increasing. So from negative infinity, well, let's write from the side here, from negative infinity to this x value, which is negative 4, this parabola is increasing. It's decreasing from negative 4. And as x goes to infinity, this keeps going down. y keeps decreasing. So as x goes to infinity, y is decreasing. What's the range? Well, the range is from the lowest y value to the highest y value. Well, these arrows go down to negative infinity. So that's my lowest value. But its highest value is negative 3, my uh, k value of the vertex. And that value is included because that is a point on my graph. Finally, the domain, well, this domain of this parabola, there were no domain restrictions. If we go back to this, we know that it's all real numbers, from negative infinity to positive infinity. So just from having it in this form, we're able to decipher all this information, put it on a graph with merely just one point instead of many points, and we can determine even further information from the graph. It's increasing or decreasing, it's range, domain, what have you. Now, <clears throat> let's take a look at a different method for maybe putting it into this form. And that's essentially finding the vertex. Now, I completed the square in the last example. But there's another method in order to find the vertex. Now, when we have a quadratic written in quadratic form, and we want to put it into this form right here, we can complete the square. And that's what we've seen. Well, if we complete the square on this generic function, right? we factor out that a value from this. So I get b over a. And then uh, I take half of it, and that's where that 2 comes from, in order to factor this. And then whatever I changed it by, I add it to that c value. And you see that c value in there. So if we think about it, this here is now my h value just by completing the square. And I'm saving you the time of actually showing this work. Okay, Just trust me on this one. So h is always the opposite of what I see in here. So h is actually negative b over 2a. Now if we think about it, this information can be derived right from this. I know an a value. I know a b value. I can just do this right here, negative b over 2a. Now <clears throat> k is this entire value here negative b squared plus 4ac all over 4a. Now, not very nice to plug this in and have to square something and possibly make a sign error and multiply and add and then divide and lots of stuff going on here. Well, if we think about it, this here is our key. Because h represents one of the x values. If I know an x value, I can evaluate the function to find the y value. k represents the y value. So just for a moment, let me move this out of the way here. Let's return to this right here. 2x squared minus 4x plus 3. We completed the square, which was a little bit of work, to find this vertex. What if we use that vertex formula? h equals negative b over 2a. Well, if I look at my quadratic, I know that b is negative 4. So negative b 
is going to be positive 4. Over 2 times a, well, a is 2. 2 times 2, well, 4 over 2 times 2 is 4, gives me 1. And we found 1 to be our vertex, or our h value of our vertex, which is also our axis of symmetry. Well, to find the k value, do I have to remember that negative b squared plus 4ac all divided by 4a? No. All I have to do is evaluate the function for this value. I know an x value. I've got to find the y value, the k. So I'm going to plug it in. 1 squared is 1 times 2 is 2. Minus 4 times 1 is 4. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 3 is a positive 1. So we found the vertex of 1, 1. That's exactly what we had before when we completed the square. So the vertex formula, this right here, is the h value. And if I evaluate the function at the h value, I have the k of the vertex. So this essentially is your vertex formula, a nice, easy, concise way to find that vertex with minimal amount of work. Notice this was a lot less work than completing the square. Trust me, you do have to know how to complete the square, as we've seen when we worked in chapter 2 dealing with circles to put those in standard form. Well, we can also use completing the square to put these in standard form. Well, here we can find that vertex using this nice, neat little formula. Now, many of you already have this formula memorized, and you just don't know it yet. Let's just for a second review the quadratic equation. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Well, that h value you're looking for is already in this formula you've taken the time to memorize at some point. Negative b over 2a. This is the axis of symmetry. So if I go to the right, I will find some point. If I go to the left, I'll find some point. That's where that plus or minus square root comes in. From the vertex, or from the axis of symmetry, I have a point to the left and a point to the right. So it's already in there. You know it. It's just the first part of the quadratic equation. Know this and know how to use it. All right, let's look at the next piece. Oh, which board do I want to use here? Yep, this one right here. All right, so here we're asked to find the equation of a quadratic function with a vertex of 2, 1 and a y-intercept of 0, 5. Well, the first thing we want to recall is the standard form that we want to work with when dealing with quadratics. So we have this here. What information am I given to start building the equation in this form? Well, I know the vertex is 2, 1. So I can plug in my h value, x minus h. And I know my k value is 1. Well, I'm not told anything about a. So we're getting there. What other information was I given? I was given the y-intercept. Well, what is the y-intercept? It's a value x, y, some point. That's given information that I can plug in here. Let's see what happens. When, according to our point, y is 5, when x is 0, whoops, and we can see, hey, the only variable here is now a. So I can do this. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is positive 4. So I have 4a. Subtract 1 from both sides. 4 equals 4a. Solve for a. We divide by 4. a equals 1. So now I have all the information I need. I know a. I know h. I know k. I can rewrite the function, find the equation of this function, f of x equals 1 times x minus 2 squared plus k, which was 1. There it is. All right, so your quiz will be to do something similar to this with the given information. Find the equation of a quadratic in this form. If the axis of symmetry is x equals negative 1, that's our axis of symmetry, it has a horizontal stretch of 2, as a hint, that's a, and a y-intercept of 0, 5. Find the 
equation in this form that fits this parameter. This has been section 4.3, quadratic functions. Thank you for watching.